there is something waiting on the failed men of society. Let me explain to you something that I saw recently. I was going to get something to eat and I ended up at Zaxby's. And in front of me was this car, the kind of car you can see that you know the car needs work because the way the car was sounding. And then the driver of the car, who I didn't know who he was, he turned this curve and I heard this scritching sound. And I was just like, man, that's funny. And then um, this car was in front of me. So he parks and the car is making all kinds of noises and it's kind of shaking. And then um, I see this older man get out of the car. So we're exiting the cars around the same time. So he goes in and I see he has a DoorDash bag in his hand. Um, I don't know how old this guy was. He had gray in his hair. Mm. He could have been my age. I don't know. I just know he was an older gentleman. And he was sitting there having a conversation with the lady at the desk about the DoorDash that he was picking up. And uh, I went in and placed my order and I sat down and I, I started to think about this because this is one of the things I think about quite a bit when I see people in certain situations. Like I see people on the side of the road begging for money or I see people uh, who are doing what I would call a low class, low skilled um type of job such as DoorDash because here's the thing and this is one of the things that I, I will talk to you guys about you have people out here who are not trying to educate themselves like one of the things that I had uh, once again I'm very much using chat GPT I'm using DoorDash not DoorDash well actually I do DoorDash but I'm using MidJourney and this is one of the things that I get. I get mocked and made fun of for using new technology by the people who are not using new new technology. It's like, oh, this is a DoorDash thing. Well, this is a, a chat GPT. And this, this is what's funny. Uh, I have actually written emails and stuff I wrote. And it's like, oh, you're sending us this chat GPT, which tells me that these people are making fun of someone who's using new technology. Um, I don't have my phone on me. I'm thinking about getting a new new cell phone. Um, but there's a lot of people who will mock folks who are using um, new technology. Like I used to pay a thousand dollars a month for my thumbnails to be made, right? Since I use Midjourney to make my th thumbnails, Midjourney costs me 30 bucks a month. And it's making some really good thumbnails. So I went from spending $1,000 a month to $30 a month to make my th thumbnails because I'm using new technology. And th this is one of the things that I, I see that People like right now, there are a multitude of people talking about sports, talking about quarterbacks, talking about very much sports is a huge business. Well, the business of talking about sports is a huge business. And I, I literally see these channels all over the place, people having something to talk about, collegiate level athletes, uh, NFL athletes, and people who are deeply, deeply passionate about their sports. But I got a question for you. If you're one of these sports people, and I'm a big sports fan, but I do not allow my um, appreciation for high athletic sports gets in the way of me making money. But I see a lot of people who actually do have these situations where 
they allow their proclivities to get in the way of making money. And I, I'm just seeing this, and this is huge. This is really, really huge. Number one, we're going to mock someone who's using, using the new technology. Uh, number two, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at sports, and we're going to spend a lot of time playing around. We're going to spend a lot of time messing around with uh, these, what I call these fast money scams, versus actually sitting down and learning how to actually create a hardcore skill, learning how to do something. And this is why your future of DoorDash is waiting for you. Because I'm quite sure when this man was younger, he never thought that he would be driving around in his raggedy car to drop off food for people. I guarantee you that was never in his mind. Just like it's not in your mind. Right at the moment, you're not thinking about, I'm going to be doing DoorDash when I'm 65. You're not thinking about that. You're just living life, enjoying each sweet breath. You just, but I guarantee you this guy, he didn't think, he had no clue that he was going to be riding around in a car that needs repair and doing DoorDash. But once again, for all you men who are failing in life, who, who refuse to build anything, who refuse to get involved, this is your future. This is your future. This, this is what's coming for you. And I can say this with a great deal of certainty because I was on that path myself. I was on that path of being pretty much a bum. I was on that path. I uh, was in a situation where things weren't going well. I would get up and go to the labor pool or labor ready at 430 in the morning to go out and get some very low page manual labor type job. I remember one time I went out and it was a black and white. It was like I had to have black fans and a white shirt. And I had to actually go out and buy the black pants. I had the white shirt, but I didn't have the pants. And I was serving the Arthur Anderson Christmas party, and it was paying at least ten bucks an hour. It was one of the. It was considered one of the the better gigs, and I now can sit back and look. There were a lot of older men, a lot of older men, like a bunch, because at the time I was in my thirties. And these men were clearly 50s, late 40s, 50s, and they were doing the same stuff that I was doing. And that pattern doesn't change. If anything, I think it's even more exploratory that you will have more and more people out here doing these low waste jobs. If you didn't know, DoorDash is a big thing on YouTube. The number of DoorDash drivers who film and go out and do their DoorDash and talk about picking up this order. Just go to YouTube search and check it out. There's, it's a huge, huge, huge thing. At one point, Uber used to be a huge, huge thing and Lyft used to be huge and that kind of fell away. And what you're going to see if you do not want to educate yourself if you do not want to take on something difficult, challenging and hard, if you keep lo looking for these easy to do simple things, DoorDash is going to be waiting for you. DoorDash or whatever simple little odd job. Because I, I watch a lot of these videos talking about the gig economy, people who are doing DoorDash, Uber Eats, Instacart, Walmart Spark, that stuff's going to be waiting for you. And it's going to be crowded. I want you to think, and this is a very, very different world that we live in today, that you have people who will never have a normal job. They're going to be on the gig economy. And I'm going to tell you why they're going to be on the gig economy, because I have been taking note Number one, 
you don't have to have any type of formal attire. I have seen people work in the gig economy look like they just rolled out of the bed. Some of the most craziest outfits. And also, I have seen on the gig economy that people are door dashing with their children or door dashing with their pets. And I don't think that anyone else is supposed to, I'm not sure because I don't do DoorDash, but I don't think anyone else is supposed to be riding along with you. But what we're going to have is the de-evolution of society. We're going to have people who are going to go from getting formal jobs. They're going to be out here doing DoorDash, Uber, Spark, Instacart. They're going to be doing all of this stuff versus actually working a normal job. And I'm here to tell you, just like I learned years ago when I was working in those um, labor ready, these jobs have no future. You go to work, you do what they need you to do. There is no upgrade. There is no future. There is no promotion. And this is what's waiting for everyone who refuses to embark on something hard. Years ago, I remember when I figured this thing out, I figured it out. Um, I got laid off from Voice Stream, which now is T-Mobile. And it literally, thanks to Earl Nightingale, it literally took me six weeks to find a job. I think I was making, what, nine bucks an hour at... Um, Voice stream. And let me see. I don't even know. I'm going to add this up because. Um, let me see. Thirty eight five hundred because that's what Renecrate started me off with divided by twelve. It's three thousand two hundred and eight dollars. Um, divided by two. Sixteen hundred minus about 300 so 1300 times 2 times 12 let's bring it home $31,000 a year um, and 9 bucks an hour let me see let me do the math on this 9 times 160 times 12 17, $18,000 a year, nine bucks an hour. So I improved my income by $20,000 a year because I embarked on doing something hard. I got into learning how to sell. I got into learning how to set appointments and I got into learning how to get leads. And this was hard. This was hard. This was not easy. It was not simple. It wasn't something that I could just blink my eyes and do. I had to buy resources. I had to do, do training. And I was working a lot. I wasn't working like 40 hours a week. No, 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 no. I was working 60 hours a week. Uh, I was doing so many things. And during that two-year period, for me, leaving the boarding house or starting with rent a crate and getting to business environments, my life totally changed because I was willing to work hard for two years. Two years. Not forever, not for 10 years, not for 20 years, but for two years. And there are many of you out here, once again, you're 30 something, you're out here living. And you're just doing bullshit jobs, food delivery, Uber, Instagram, you you know, Insta, Instacart. You're doing all this other stuff and you have no thought of consideration of the future. And before you know it, yeah, you may be 30 today, but before you know it, you're going to be 65. And this is something else I think about because, you know, with investing, people talk about if you just simply invest, you know, a little bit of money diligently and on point for 40 years, 
I am 56 years old and I got on this path 21 years ago, 21, 22 years ago. And I'm here to tell you that life will pass by much quicker than you think. And you like, I'll be 60 in four years. It's four years. I'll be 60. And one of the things that will happen is you will have people who do not take in consideration the factor of time. And this is what I'm saying. A lot of you DoorDash, Instacart, these simple, easy, do nothing jobs, they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. And. Mark my words, there's a lot of you that's like, man, I ain't talking to me. I ain't going to be doing that. 20 years from now, whatever will it, whatever it be around, because I'm quite sure it's going to be something new and innovative. It's going to be some simple, easy, low-wage job, maybe Amazon, delivering Spark, whatever. That's what's waiting on you. That's what's waiting on you. And if you do not... Um, Go ahead and begin to work on doing something difficult, challenging, and hard. That's what's waiting on you. DoorDash. In the thumbnail, that's a picture of the dude. That's a real picture of a person's real life. That's what's waiting on you if you do not pick up something. So I'm getting ready to start some new training. And what I'm doing is creating an email list and the link is below for the men who want to enter the man program, who want to level up, who don't want to be like this dude who I do could have been my age, you know, because like I said, I'm 56. I don't know how old he was, but he was clearly an older man riding around in a raggedy car delivering DoorDash. So if you don't want that to be your future, you can go below and then you can go ahead and get into this new fangled thing of getting yourself set up where you can have a brighter and better future. Because every time I see someone in the links below, every time I see someone doing DoorDash or Uber or lift because I talk to these people. I talk to them all the time, and I, I found out people been doing this stuff for years, and it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a huge trap for people to be living that type of life with no regard to the future. Because, like I said, I actually took this guy's picture and put it on my desktop because I just wanted to look at because here, here's the thing. I, I put reminders in my head that if you don't do the things that are hard, because like I said, I got people mocking me and making me fun, making fun of me for using chat GPT mid journey because they don't want to do it. They don't want to learn how to do it. They don't want to sit down and go through the struggles. They don't want to do it and they will make fun of someone who's actually dedicating time, effort, and energy to learning new skills because, mark my words, artificial intelligence is now and the future. And if you're not trying to learn how to use artificial intelligence, become an architect of artificial intelligence, you're going to get ran over by artificial intelligence. And you're going to be like this dude, this dude right here doing DoorDash when you're an old man. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing DoorDash when you're an old man. That's what's waiting on you.